Well, good morning. This is uh, the day that I'm going to put the cleats on my shoe. This is the way I do it. It's not necessarily the way that everyone fixes their cleats to their shoes. Some people like to use the ball of their foot, which is up here somewhere. But I like to have my cleats further towards the back, just behind the ball of the foot. It feels more comfortable uh, and it, it just doesn't seem so much pressure on the ball of my foot if I have it there. Uh, anyway, so I need to take this back plate off uh, and then I'll, I'll show you how I, I fit my cleats to my shoes. So I'm going to stop it here, I'm going to take this back plate off and I'll start again. So here we go, I've got the back plate off, there's a back plate, don't need that anymore unless of course I take my cleats off. Um, but what I, like I said, I like to have my cleats right at the very back as far back as they go so I'll put my screwdriver in the hole and I'll slide it if it'll go it's a bit tight this one there you go I've slid it all the way back so as you can see it's a, I'm going to use these two bolt holes and I'm going to fit my cleat but let's have a look at my old pair of shoes, which I use on the road bike. Um, I use the same setup uh, on my road bike, as well as my mountain bike. So it, this kind of thing applies uh, to both bikes, for me anyway, for my style. One second. Here you go. This is my shoes that I use on my road bike. This is, this is how I, I fit them. If I put this ruler uh, up against the cleat and try and line it up as best, there's a slight dimple there and there's an arrow there. So if I line the, the ruler up with the arrow, try and get that, that's about it. So as you can see, it's not quite pointing at the at the toe. If, if I was pointing at the toe, it would be like that. But I'm pointing slightly outwards from the toe. These, this, uh, I don't know if you can see, but in there is two little spaces. So on this particular shoe, there's um, a spacer, but on, on the uh, on the boot, there isn't a spacer. So I just fit it as far back as I can. As you can see, I have tried um, tried moving on these pair of shoes. You can see the marks just around the edge there, where I had them as far forward as I can get them, and it just doesn't work for me. So that's why I now try. I fit them right at the back. That, that's where the ball of the foot would be, and that's about an inch behind, 25 mil behind the ball of my foot. Um, but yeah, these are these are what I use on my road bike. Uh, I have another pair uh, which I use when this when I'm clean, cleaning this pair. I let them dry, and I use the other pair to cycle. But uh, these ones are quite nice but I'm, I'm waffling a bit anyway so I'll just do that ag again we'll just show you there there's a ruler and it's pointing off roughly in that direction so I'm going to try and replicate that on this pair of shoes there you go that's the that's the bag of bits uh, for the cleat what I um what I normally do is I put a bit of grease on the bolts. I normally use uh, copper grease, but I haven't got any today. So I'm just using a bit of this um, Park Tool uh, silver grease, which is uh, an aluminium color grease. If I can squeeze any out, there we go. That's ample, ample grease. The grease, so the grease will act as an anti-seize compound and it'll make, it'll make removing the bolts um, later a little bit easier. If you've ever done it, if you've ever had to replace your cleats, you'll find that it's all gone rusty because they don't use stainless steel. So I just use a little bit of um, grease to uh, act as an anti-seize paste. So that's one cleat. There's the uh, spacer there and two 
bolts in there. So that's now ready to fit. Now that will go in there on my shoe. What I need to do is get an Allen key. Right, I've got my Allen socket weight ready. So I've started the threads off already and I'll just give these a little nip up uh, just so I can position the cleat how I like it. So uh, I've left a bit of grease on the cooker top. So what I'll do is I'll clean that off so I don't get it everywhere and I'll continue. There we go. That's the cooker top all nice and clean. And of course my fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ruler back on my cleat, on the new cleat. And I'm going to adjust it slightly so that it's pointing roughly to where we had it before. So that looks like that's a good angle. I'm happy with that angle. See it's slightly, we'll bring it up, slightly off the toe. Slightly exaggerated, but it's slightly off the toe. The uh, front of the toe would be there. And you can see the angle on the cleat is a bit different. So that's how I have it. I have it up that way, slightly off the toe. Now, I just moved it, bugger. All right, so I'm just going to loosen these off a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to position it so that it's central. So that the gap between the edge of the cleat and the edge of the shoe is the same. So let me just... Um, Re once you've done it once, you know what you're doing, All right? You'll see. So, I'm just going to reposition that slightly that way. Yeah, that's off to the toe, that looks central to me. A bit over that way. Now, I'll see if I can get that in. I can't quite get that in that side. So, right. That looks about right. I just tighten these up so it stops moving around so much. Right. They're going to measure about four mil that side. It's about four mil that side. So that's good. I'll recheck the alignment. So that's off to the there. Now I'm going to get this. I'm going to attach this to my torque driver. Uh, let me just go and set it to the correct torque. Right, here we go. I've set my torque wrench to five newton meters. The uh, Shimano book says between five and six newton meters. So if I set this for five, I know I'm I'm in the right ballpark. And I just start nipping it up equal equal each side until we get to the right torque. Just biting into the bed of the shoe. There we go. That's five newton meters equally torqued. Double check my alignment. Line that up there and there. Slightly off the front of the toe. So that's perfect. Absolutely happy with that. That should do me. Check the gap either side. Four millimeters. And about four millimeters, about 4.2. But there you go. So that's the cleat set up on that shoe. And I shall repeat the procedure on the other shoe. As you can see, in true Blue Peter fashion, I've already taken the cover off. And now I'm going to fit the cleat to this shoe. And following the same procedure, with my greased 
bolts. Um, let me just get my trusty Allen key. Makes it a lot easier when they're connected. So you don't you don't need a lot of grease on there. So it's only on one half, but by the time it's in the thread, it will uh, spread out around all of the threads, and it will. Uh, when I come to remove it later on, if I ever want to uh, take my cleats out or reposition them, let me just tighten that up correctly. Now, again, well, I, uh, I should fit it there. Now that's pointing too much at the toe, so I'm going to tilt it that way. Make sure I've got the right gap before I tighten things up. Uh, that's about four mil. Uh, and that's about four mil. And just really check the alignment. I don't know if you can see, but there's an arrow there and an arrow there and an arrow there. So if I put my ruler between that arrow and that arrow, line them up in the central, it should tell me where it's going. Now that's still pointing towards the toe, so I'm just going to turn it a little bit. Okay, a bit more. See, I feel a bit like James May, only less talented when it comes to bike stuff. Yeah, see, James May and I, both of us can't cook. But he's got a TV channel and I haven't. All right, anyway, so I'm happy with that. Just going to nip that up a little bit. And then recheck. In between there and there. Now that looks like that's pointing at the toe too much. All right. Right, that should be fine. All right, let's tighten these up. Five newton meters again. They show mine. I recommend between five and six, and I'm going to err on the side of caution and tighten mine to five. I can always nip them up if I have it. If I need to, go up to six newton meters. Just double check because I'm a bit paranoid. Always paranoid. There we go, yeah, that's off. That's off. Yeah, it's definitely off from the centre of the toe. When you put grease on, you can actually tighten it more than the torque because it's lubricated so I would recommend lubricating it and setting it to the low torque like I've done here there you go happy with that so that is my new shoes with the cleats on ready to go biking in the cold weather now to tidy up before her indoors comes in and finds out what I've been doing on our cooker top Aha. Is this any different? The postman's just bought me a um, an add-on for my GoPro, which is a light. Um, uh, it, does that make it any different? It is a bit brighter, isn't it? I'll just... Um, now I can see a bit better. Let's put that in there. Yeah, that's definitely off from the centre of the toe, which is there, I'd say. Yeah, so that's my new boots. The XM9 from Shimano. Gore-Tex lined, waterproof, thermally insulated boot, ready for the cold weather. 
I think uh, I'm going to enjoy riding my bike with these. So I've been wearing them indoors for a few days. Let's check that boot, see how that goes. Yeah, it's the same, it's because it's opposite. Yep, just rambling. But yeah, that's the, uh, I do like the, these boots. I've, say I, because they're slightly bigger than I normally wear, I normally wear a size 43, which is a nine, and these are a nine and a half. These are, yeah, these are nine and a half. My, my other pair are a size nine. Um, these are wide fitting shoes, and I do like the way they tie up. Let's see if I can tie them up. There we go. You can see that band across there tightens up quite nicely into that shoe giving you a nice quite firm feel right 